Okay, in this video we're going to talk about writing equations of polar curves that are actually just shifted around in the xy plane and they're all going to be limousons, so some shifted limousons. Um, and let's talk about what you need to know before you can do this. So first thing you need to know, you need to know uh, unit circle angles, which hopefully you do if you've gotten to polar coordinates, uh, specifically the quadrantals, um, so those aren't really a big deal. Uh, we need to know how to graph sine and cosine in rectangular because we really want to write the equations of trig graphs in rectangular, specifically sine and cosine. We need to kind of remember how polar works. Well, not kind of, we need to really remember how polar works. And then um, to shift them in the xy plane, we're going to have to remember parametric equations of a circle, which uh, you probably remember, but if you don't, look like x equals h plus r cosine theta and y equals k plus r sine theta, where h k is where the origin gets shifted to. Um, and r is the radius of the circle, but what we're going to do is we're going to replace the radius um, that's usually constant, which gives you a circle, with our polar equation. Um, and it's pretty neat how it works. So if you don't remember any of these or you need help with them or whatever, I'm going to put links to my videos in the description and you can take a look at those. So let's, uh, let's try to do an example. So we have two curves here. I'm going to do the one that's in, uh, I guess, the second quadrant first. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna look and you can see that the, I had to give it to you, but the origin got shifted to that random point inside. So negative five, four is where the origin was shifted. Um, so I'm going to, based on that, sketch in some, some kind of axes here. So a horizontal line through there, vertical line through there. And um, now everything is gonna be based on distance from that point. So everything is the distance from negative five, four, and our angles are also based on those kind of axes that we sketched in. So what we're gonna do is make a table of theta and r values. So we're really focused on the polar part right now. We don't care about the shift and all that. So when theta is equal to zero, I'm gonna be at this point. So that is um, three units from uh, where our shifted origin is. So when theta is zero, I'm gonna get three. And now I'm gonna keep going. So I'm gonna rotate to pi over two. We'll end up at this point, so that's pi over two. And then I am two units from the origin. So it's gonna be pi over two comma two. Rotate again to get to this point. Um, we are one unit away from the origin and we're facing that direction, right? Because we're at pi. So pi facing toward the negative x axis, I guess. Uh, we move one unit, so that's gonna be pi one. Uh, rotate again to this point. That'll be three pi over two and when we're Facing three pi over two, we move two units in that direction. So that'll be three pi over two, positive two. And then finally, we end up back where we started. So it'll be two pi and then three again. So what we do after we make this table is we graph it in rectangular. Or maybe you can just look at that and write the equation, but I think it's a good idea to plot the points. So um, I'm gonna do that. So start with this, plot some points. And you can see by looking at it, we could put a nice curve through it. That's definitely a positive cosine graph. So let's write the equation of that graph. So R is sinusoidal axis, you can see is two. Um, it's positive cosine, so plus. I can go one up or one down, so that's my amplitude. And then it was a cosine. So this is our polar equation, but now we wanna shift it. So I'm gonna shift it to um, this point right here is where the origin goes, so negative five, four. So let's write our equation. So it's all based on parametrics for a circle, which was x is h plus r cosine, and y is k plus r sine. So x is, h in this case is negative five, that's the x coordinate where the origin ended up, and plus r is the polar curve. So I like to put it in parentheses, even if you don't need to, you should definitely put it in parentheses because you have to distribute the cosine that we're gonna write to everything from the polar curve. And then y is equal to uh, four, and then plus r, which is our polar curve, and then sine of theta. And that's actually it. If we graph that, it'll definitely work. Um, so that's one example. Let's do another. So the next example is, if you look at it, let's start over, it's an, a limousine that has an inner loop. Um, so those are kind of, uh, I like them. They're kind of, I think, one of the most interesting polar curves. and we need to definitely know where the origin gets shifted. So with these, you have to remember that it starts and stops its inner loop, um, graphically at least, at the origin. Um, so that's, you know, you're gonna, when r is equal to zero is where you begin. 
So we have to know where that is so we can remember where to put these axes. But once we've done that, it's the same deal. So let's make a table. So we start on the positive x-axis. Um, that's our origin, so keep that in mind. So start there. When theta is equal to zero, we are two units from the origin. So we get zero, two. We rotate, this is one of the weird ones, right? We rotate, we're facing positive pi over two, but instead of going in that direction, we go the opposite. So this kind of directed distance is negative one unit. So that'll be pi over two, negative one. We're gonna rotate face pi and move in that direction. So we're gonna get a positive r value. So positive two again, so pi two. Um, rotate, so you're facing three pi over two. We get to this point and you're gonna go from the origin. Remember to measure that. Don't go from the bottom of the inner loop, which is a common mistake. Uh, that distance is five. So that's three pi over two, you're five units from the origin. And then uh, we can finish with, uh, at two pi, we're back to two units. And we're gonna take this, turn it into a rectangular graph, write the equation, and uh, be pretty good. So let's see. Here's kind of a grid for us. I'm gonna plot the points. After I plot the points, I'm gonna connect the points. So we get this, and then that's going to be r equals so sinusoidal axis is definitely two. This looks like a negative sine graph to me. So minus, I can go three up or three down. So my amplitude is three, and then it's a sine graph. So we have that, so that's the polar curve. So if I took that and just plotted it, it would be um, at the origin, but it'd be the right shape. Now we need to use parametrics to actually um, shift it over and up. So let's do that. So here's where the origin went. That's the point three, uh, three, one. And so let's see, it's gonna be x equals h, which is three. And then it's plus r, which you should put in parentheses. So that's our polar curve. And then cosine theta. And then y is equal to one, which is k, plus r, which is our polar curve in parentheses. And then sine theta. And there you go, all right? So that's uh, two pretty good examples of how we can shift polar curves around the xy plane using combination of parametric and all the stuff we know about trig graphing. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.